Welcome back to part three of our series where we are building an Excel user form that will take our Excel objects on one sheet and export them to a specified Office application. So whether that be PowerPoint or Word in this particular example. In our last video, we began adding you know, some functionality to our particular form. So you know, if we click the cancel button, it would hide the form and unload it. And then we also added uh, some functionality where when the form is displayed to the user, uh, the dropdowns are populated. So what we're going to do in this video is we're now going to deal with what I would call the bulk of the code, which is um, adding the functionality where if they click the export button, it does something and it actually exports the object. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our BBA editor. We're going to go to our Excel export form. We'll do our little trick where if we double click, it will um, populate some code for us and we'll actually see the code that we wrote um, in the last video. What we're going to do from here is um, kind of to get things, uh, or at least the stage set, what you would want to do first is because we're going to be working with different applications, um, we would want to add some references. Never, ever, ever do this if you're planning to have this shared with somebody else unless you can absolutely guarantee that the same version of Word and PowerPoint that you wrote this code in exists on their computer. If it does not, never ever do this. You should always do late binding with something like an Excel add-in where you're going to start um, building some user forms that's going to start talking between applications. Otherwise, a lot of stuff can go wrong and it's a pain to fix it. So again, Reiterating, if you're ever going to share a user form that has to interact with different libraries or things along that nature, always use late binding if this is something you're going to only use for yourself and maybe one or two other people that you can guarantee have the same version, you know, early binding should be fine. Okay, so from here, what I want to do is I want to make sure I have the PowerPoint 16 object library and the power, uh, sorry, the Word 16 object library enabled. If you're on an earlier version, they might look a little different, but name should be relatively the same. So from here, what are we going to do? First thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take some code that I wrote up here and I'm going to just put it right back in here. This will kind of just help speed things up a little bit. And so here, declare object variables related to form. Uh, there's one more technically I need. And that is going to be our little checkbox. And so we'll call it checkbox link. And that will be a Microsoft forms dot checkbox object. So pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to declare some other variables related to string parsing. Again, this will make more sense when we actually get to that point. And then this one will be app selection as string dim object selection as string dim link selection as string and then dim split object it will be an array but it will have all strings in that array so that's that and then we're going to also define object variables related to Excel exports. And so um, what we'll do actually is we'll just take what I took here. Perfect. The only kind of downside is sometimes it's a little bit hard to, you know, jump in between things. Um, let's do this. I'm going to copy more code again. That's, that's the fun thing about it. Uh, we'll take this one. All right. We're going to change a couple little things about it just to be consistent. Technically, I want to refer to the object I'm inside of. So I'm going to specify that to be me. That's fine. Um, uh, what we'll do this is we'll um, check box, box link. And honestly, I can't remember what I named it. Linked checkbox. Okay. And we'll do linked checkbox perfect and then this is grab the linked check 
box. Okay, so, so far so good. Um, what we're gonna do next is for these two guys right here, well, technically three guys right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab their current selection. And so we'll grab the current object selection. And so we'll call our object selection, so that's our string, that will equal our drop down objects and there's a value property. So that's just the current value that you have selected. And then we'll grab the current application selection and then we'll call our app selection string and set that equal to our drop down applications dot value. So whatever the one is on that. And then with the checkbox link, same thing. So grab the status of the checkbox. And so we'll say link selection equals check box link dot value. So that will just grab all the current selections that the user has specified after they've launched the form and I'm assuming have done something. From here, um, if you remember, each one of our objects has a concatenation with an at symbol inside of it. The reason why is if you were building this where you wanted to actually export from multiple sheets, I kind of gave you a little bit of a trick that would allow you to be able to reference the sheet and then the chart object all in the same combo box. So it's just a little trick. Um, you could technically have a second drop down where you specify um, the sheet name. That might make sense, especially if it's just one, to be honest. So select the object, oh sorry, split the object selection on the at symbol. And so what we'll do is we'll do the split object. So that's gonna equal an array. And so we'll call the split built-in function, and then we'll pass through the object selection that we currently have, and then we're going to split it on the delimiter at symbol. Okay, and then I want the object name. Well, that is going to be our split object array, and that's just the first one. And then I want the sheet name, and that will equal our split object array, and that will be the second element. Keep in mind we are zero-based. All right. From here, we will define the worksheet that contains the object. And so we will say set Excel sheet equal to this workbook dot worksheets, and then we'll pass through our sheet name string. Okay, and then from here, we need to handle, um, what is it, the, uh, the object type. So uh, if it's a chart, we have to copy it a certain way. And if it's a list object, we have to copy it a, a certain way. So from here, handle uh, the object selection. We are going to select case true. So whatever one returns true, that's the one that you're going to grab. And so the first case that we're going to test for is case object name like quotations asterisk chart asterisk quotations do that so if it's a chart or if there is the word chart in the name then we're going to copy it so if it's a chart then it's a chart then grab the charts objects collection. So we will set our Excel chart equal to the worksheet that we specified. We'll go into that chart objects collection and then we will specify the object name. Hold on, it's, oh, sorry, Excel sheet. Good, good. And then from here, we need to copy it. And so we'll say Excel chart dot chart dot chart area. 
and we'll call the copy method. And really, this is almost identical, but you guessed it. With this one, we're not seeing if there's the word chart, we're seeing if there, were, there is the word table inside of it. And then what we'll do is we'll change the object that we'll set it to. We'll say if it's a table, then grab the list objects collection. And then what we'll do here is, um, where is it? List objects. And then from here, um, we will take that one. And we do, again, have to change just a tiny bit of it, but nothing crazy. We'll say Excel table. We'll call the range property, and then we will call the copy method. So range is literally the entire range, including the header. OK, so that handles the object selection, and it makes sure that it goes to the proper collection and then copies it the proper way. The next, and probably the, the big one, handle the application selection. And we'll say select case app selection and select. OK, first case, let's handle Word. So we'll say case is Word. So if it's Word, we got to open a new instance of Word. If it's Word, then open a new instance of Word. It is not using an existing one. Keep that in mind, please. And so we'll call our Word application object. We will dim our Word doc as a Word document because it's going to be going on a document. And then we'll say Word range as a Word uh, range. So far, so good. We'll create a new instance of Word. And we'll set that Word app equal to a new Word dot application. And then I want to make sure I can see the application because not really helpful if I can't see it. I want to make sure that visible property is set equal to true. And then we'll add a document. And we'll say set word doc equal to word app. We'll go into the documents collection and we'll call the add method. Then I want to grab that first paragraph. Grab the first paragraph. And then this one. Ooh, fun, fun. We're going to set our word range equal to our word doc. We'll go to paragraphs, we'll grab the first one, and then we'll grab that range property. Okay, fun part. So now we gotta handle paste type. So handle paste type. So if they had checked linked, what we'll do is we'll say if link selection equals true, then else end if. So if it's true, it means they want it pasted as a link. So paste as linked OLE object. And then I'll change that to capital O, lowercase b. We'll take our word range. We will go into the paste special method. And then we'll go to data type and then word paste OLE object and then also we want to make sure that link is specified to true and then from here what we'll do is just paste as ole object so all that means is we just have to take off that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut off here just so that way i don't make it too long in the next video we will finish up this particular set of code and we'll add in the PowerPoint and then we'll test it out. So if you have any questions at this point, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, we will see you in the final video.